Hey guys, what's up? Ron Perry here from Techno Buffalo. So a couple weeks back, the guys at 3D Robotics sent us their new drone, the Iris Plus. Uh, this drone's supposed to have autopiloting features, follow me, like with GPS tracking. It's supposed to be crazy. So over the last couple weeks, we got to fly it, test it, shoot some footage. And so we have our review for you guys today. So the first thing I was really interested in personally as the video guy here at Techno Buffalo was the ease of use and how this would film. So. I'll kind of separate the two. In terms of ease of use, it was a little more complicated than I would have liked. Out of the box, setting it up wasn't exactly very straightforward. The battery had two to three different cords. I really didn't understand why. Uh, the charger was also like that and plugging the gimbal in, uh, which is an additional add-on for the drone. Uh, that had like the weirdest pin connection. It's not a huge deal, but it definitely was something that annoyed me a little bit. They have awesome tutorials on their website, so I would definitely recommend checking those out if you do pick up this drone. It makes setting up way easier and way faster. One of the issues we did have before going out to fly was that the drone actually has GPS. The GPS is used to hold the drone in place if there are like crazy winds or something, or when you stop operating, it'll hold it in one place so you don't lose control or at higher altitudes. We did have some problems getting GPS lock. Maybe it was because of where we are around office buildings. Uh, we've also heard people have problems around like a lot of like taller trees and stuff like that. So just something to bear in mind. That being said, once we did get it up in the air, it was freaking awesome. Uh, you do need to start out a little bit slower, kind of ease into it so you're not kind of all over the place. The controls are very sensitive, but once you kind of ease in, ease out, take off, all that stuff with the joysticks, it, you get the hang of it pretty quickly and it is really, really fun. Uh, we did our first flight without a gimbal and without the GoPro on it uh, because they say they recommend it for some reason, for safety issues, I assume. Overall, I'd say manual operation with this drone was as expected. It was great, it was smooth. The drone's really, really powerful. Uh, there's controls to actually point where the gimbal is facing. So once you do have a GoPro on there, you can choose where you aim the camera. One of the additional add-ons they actually have is GoPro Live View. So it allows you to see what the GoPro sees on the remote control itself. We personally didn't use this. What we did instead was just use the app available for iOS or Android for GoPro, uh, which we love. So that was pretty awesome as well. So that pretty much summed up the manual control. What was really interesting about what 3D Robotics did here with Iris Plus, however, is are the autopilot features and the follow me feature. Now, I didn't know how I felt about this, but after using it a couple of times, my conclusion is that it's a really cool feature, but it's more of a novelty from a filmmaking and video aspect rather than it is actually a professional tool. It's kind of like autofocus in cameras. It works and eventually you'll get focus, but you can't really use it for filming purposes. And the reason I say this is because the follow me feature works perfectly. Um, you know, we had a tablet and we hit follow me and if we'd walk around, it would follow us and the gimbal would track us and that sort of stuff. But the thing we noticed was, was that it's a bit jarring. Like the, uh, the drone will fly, the camera will readjust, it'll fly, readjust, fly, readjust. And so for any of you who do video making, you know that that's really not an ideal situation. You want your camera moves to be smooth, fluid, uh, which they really weren't. So again, it definitely works on paper, but it doesn't work in the most executionable of ways. The autopilot features were pretty similar. Uh, they worked really well with the tablet. You can set an unlimited amount of points of where you want the drone to fly, the altitude you want it to fly at, uh, which is really cool. If you personally feel a little sketchy about controlling the drone yourself, it'll even land itself, which is a great safety precaution. But Again, for filming purposes, it doesn't really work that well. It's still too jarring to really use for regular footage. One of the oddities is actually that the app for the autopilot and the follow me functions is only available for Android. So we did have to use an Android tablet for this, but it is not available for iOS devices. Something to bear in mind uh, if you are planning on picking up this drone. And another weird quirk was actually the battery door in the back. This whole thing is made of plastic, but the battery door on the back uh, was pretty difficult to close because the battery has some thicker cords. So you kind of have to jam it all in there and just like snap it shut, which sometimes feels like you might almost break it, but you just got to be careful with that. That was something I thought could have been better in terms of build quality. In terms of pricing, the Iris Plus starts at $750. Now, that might seem really cheap compared to DJI's Phantom 3 or something, but it's actually not. They actually match up pretty well in terms of pricing because you do have to buy your own GoPro. The DJI comes with its own camera, and you do also have to add on the gimbal. Just the drone and the gimbal alone add up to $950, so you're hovering in about the same price range. So, final thoughts. I think this drone is really cool. I mean, we had a great time with it. It's a really fun device. Now, if you just want a drone to fly around and mess around with, this is amazing. Uh, if you're using it for filming or video purposes, it's really good, but drones are in their infancy as we see them right now. So they will improve. Autopiloting will get better. The follow me feature uh, will get better with newer versions of this drone. Right now, I don't think the autopilot features are good enough to use them on a professional filming level, but 
they're certainly a fun novelty to have. If you do manual operation and you get really good at it, I could see you getting some really good footage out of this drone, you know, coupled with a GoPro 4 like we had, for example, in 4K. It's overall really fun. It comes in at a really good price point. So we're definitely fans of it here. That's it for this video, guys. Let us know what you thought. What do you guys think of this drone? Would you pick it up or would you go with something like the Phantom 3? Why or why not? Leave us a comment below. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video and hit the big subscribe button right here for more tech videos.